Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Forum Forward TV. We're glad you're joining us, whether you're here in Chicago or online. I'm joined now by Philippe Sasson, and we are talking about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is generational differences, right? Absolutely. So you know this story, right? The boomers, the Xers, the millennials. We're going to dive right in. Let's talk a little bit about what you see as really the biggest challenge when all these different generations come together in the workplace. What do you think is the biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge is the ability for an organization to develop a policy that works for every single generation. And this is not about taking advantage of one versus another or making one more important than another. Mm -hmm. Each generation has something to contribute. Absolutely. We were talking about that before where sometimes there are these stereotypes, let's say about millennials, for example. That's right. And some of them may be negative, but there's a positive side to those, right. right? How would you talk about that? Contrary to a lot of popular belief, um, the younger generation has a very strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. They work really hard. They're very innovative. They're very driven to do better. Mm -hmm. For them to be able to achieve this, they need to be really surrounded by an environment that is uh, positive toward that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that environment is lacking, then you see the worst part of what's perceived the lack of, um, uh, of uh, work ethic and others from that generation. So really, when we hear something that, you know, a millennial wants to be president of their organization in one year, yes. the positive side of that is that they're so motivated, they're going to work hard, and they're not going to... That's right. They're not going to take And if somebody say less. that to you, what you want to say is, that sounds great. How yeah. can we make this happen? Yeah, yeah. And to be open to it That's instead right. of criticizing it. You cannot it. project your own path to success and the time it took in a different environment to what somebody will have to do moving forward to be successful. That's interesting, and I think that's a big les lesson, especially for people like me, Generation Xers, right? You were talking before that sometimes the Xers and the millennials might really have the conflict, not the boomers after all, right? Yeah, the, 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 the Gen Xers are really the people that tend to give less credit to the younger generation. They tend to be the more critical. And the reason being that the Gen Xers represent pretty much in the work environment most of the middle to upper management today. Mm -hmm. Younger generations start working for those people. Mm -hmm. So they de definitely go directly to those to uh, Gen Xers for you know, uh, reporting to. Mm -hmm. And Gen Xers are only separated by 10 years sometimes. They yeah. went to the same school. They use technology, but in a whole different way. Wow. They don't have this desire to express themselves the way that the younger generation do. And that creates a whole different perspective. So what do you think, what advice would you give to Gen Xers like me? I mean, I, I don't want to admit it, but I think some of that is very true, even about myself. So what advice would you give? There's a lot of Gen Xers here at Association right. Forum. What advice do you give us when dealing well, with... Number one is don't be uptight and relax. <laughs> like that. And I'm going to give you an example for that. Uh, written communication is uh -huh. a pet peeve of a lot of Gen Xers. It needs to be written well. It needs to be a perfect English. It needs to be spelled correctly. Sometimes it doesn't. The right. purpose of the communication, which has multiple angles, is for the person to interact. Yeah. If there's a comma missing or if there's the letters out of order, it's not really a big deal. That's interesting. And, and I am a journalism major, so I'm very guilty of that. AP for style. sure. I know, totally <laughs> AP style. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. A journalism major and an Xer. My God. Now you I, understand. Let's talk a little bit about boomers. What's your advice for maybe folks who are working with baby boomers? What kind of things should we be looking for to get along with them? Boomers have a lot of uh, very strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, they're in a position in their life where typically they have a family, where typically they're thinking about retirement. They grew up in an environment that was very different than it is today. Yet, what I love about boomers is how, as the original rebels, they keep redefining the environment around them. And I don't think a lot of people give credit to the boomers from that. The, the perspective to retirement is actually foreign to the boomers, as in the traditional retirement. Hmm. The veterans generation before them retired in a pretty traditional way. Uh -huh. um, you know, 65, and then uh, maybe you get a cabin on a lake, and uh -huh. you spend some time with the grandkids. The boomers want to be active. Yeah, and not true. just active by doing crossword puzzles. I'm <laughs> talking about being part of community associations. They right. want to be surrounded by people that are active like themselves. They move back to the center of the city, the downtown. Uh, empty nesters and others, so they're redefining that trend. And I think for association, that creates a lot of opportunities to have an uh, involvement. Uh, many boomers that I know are very, very agile in their mind and, 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 mm -hmm. and understand that they don't get social media, mm -hmm. but are happy to find people that do and understand that it's, it's a different world out there. Absolutely. It's a little bit more difficult to convince sometimes Gen Xers. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe not. I agree. I agree. Let me ask you this. I was talking with some folks here at Association Forum last night that there's so much talk about redesigning meeting space, redesigning yes. um, agendas for 
for the millennials, yes. for that next generation. Yes. Well, sometimes the Gen Xers feel a little bit left out. Now, yes. is that because we're just hypercritical, or is that you think some truth well, to that? Well, there's too many reasons. One is there's uh, the, the Gen Xer is a 20-year span generation, mm -hmm. and that represents about 50 million Americans. Wow. The Gen Yers is about a 15-year span, 12 to 15-year span generation that represents 75 million Americans. Wow. So there are way more Gen Yers than there are Gen Xers. Okay. So that, that, that's kind of one of the reasons. Um, so when you look at this concept of interaction, it's very, very different. Right. Uh, Gen Yers like open space. They like to be able to go and meet people directly, to have relaxed environment, to sit well, to bring their laptop coffee, talk to people mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in a, uh, a rule-less, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And Gen Xers, is it just that we kind of want to fit into the traditional and we just show up and do what we have to do? Is that what Gen we Xer <laughs> brings a lot to this country, like every generation. <laughs> Let, uh -huh. I, I'm a Gen Xer myself. Okay, good, good. Uh, we just grew up in an environment that was dominated by veterans and boomers. Yeah, for sure. And technology kind of come at the tail end of that generation. Right. It was more technology as in geek technology right. as opposed to technology today, which is a social technology. Technology. Yeah, that's true. And the social technology is very, very different. Right. Absolutely. Well, so interesting. I just, I love this topic, so I could go for days. But Philippe, thanks so much for being with us. That's my pleasure. Thank you. We appreciate it right here on Forum Forward TV.